Oh, good day, and welcome back to my channel. Harry Houdini here in Australia, and I have got a great box open for you. But look, um, don't worry, those of you expecting all those other builds, they are coming. Remember, we did a poll. We had this big poll, and I ran around. You know, we polled everyone to decide what would be the best things to build in 2023. Go back and watch my poll video if you haven't already vaulted that poll. Now, one of the things that came up was a new kit that I acquired as a Christmas present, and everyone was excited about it. I am too. So... We are building the short Sunderland. Yeah, it's the venerable old Airfix 172nd kit, first moulded in 1959. Yeah, it is that old, but is it still a great kit? I think it probably is. By the reactions I'm getting from everybody, went, oh, I built that when I was a kid, or I wanted to build that again, or I built it recently, it still goes together brilliantly. Everyone seems excited about this, and I am too. So... That is what we're going to do in this video. We're going to open this box up, see what it's like, do a dry fit, and then I'm going to talk about my plans for it. Because, well, you know me in this channel, there's always something extra I do, right? And that's the thing, I have some plans for this. Not too much, not too radical, but um, let's just say kangaroos. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay then, that all sounds pretty exciting, doesn't it? Right, let's roll the music. Okay, what do you get for your hard-earned shekels? We get a lovely big box. It's quite a big box, and uh, in its day, this was a big kit for Airfix, you know. It was the one that we all went, oh, wow, 150 parts. My goodness, that's a lot. <laughs> of course, nowadays, that's just nothing, you know. That's just the average sort of little 170-second scale, sort of a spitfire or something. has got at least 150, probably 200 parts. But um, beautiful box art. FX box art, especially for this period, was just absolutely gorgeous, and I really love it, you know. Now, although mine is a white box, it's not what usually I refer to as a white box. Usually when I mean a white box, it's from the 60s and 70s, the early moulds. This one's actually a 90-odd moulding, uh, but... Maybe it's okay still, because the thing with Airfix, right, their moulds are getting old, getting old. I mean, this mould is now over 60 years old. It really is. <laughs> it's um, it's a little bit older than me. Only by a year. Uh, so let's have a look. What do you get? Now, I have already rebagged, because that's what you do, okay? Because a usual Airfix, everything was just everywhere. It was just parts everywhere, and stuff was around, and, you know, usually there's a whole lot of stuff that suicides off. So that's... Pretty well par for the course. You expect that with an old Airfix kit. And um, they've only just got a bit better lately. At least there's a box with a bag in it. Uh, but everything's in the bag crushed. And if the bag tears, still everything suicides out. So uh, what have I got here? Club Airfix. Oh, there you go. You can join that. It'll be out of date. That's no good. Um, we have the instructions, which appears to be a photocopy. They must have got off the interwebs or something. Because it's not double-sided. It's not a book. It's just a whole lot of pages. But, um, you know, that's how it is. No decals in this one, and there are some missing parts. We'll get to that shortly. But the instructions are typical Airfix fare, and we will go into that in detail and do part by part. See, it's pretty simple. It's really old sort of stuff. They haven't changed that much at all. In fact, these would be the instructions, maybe not the ones in the 60s, because often the ones in the 60s, you get a picture, exploded diagram of like 50 parts, and this is how they all go together. And that's how you're supposed to do it. And then the next page will show you the next 50. The next page will show you the next 50. At least this is a little later. Well, it's a 90s kit, so this will be the maybe the 90s instructions, depending where they downloaded them from. So, yeah. Okay, we'll go into that in a bit detail in a sec. Now, the fuselage halves you will find loose. That's pretty well part of the course, this sort of kit. So you will find them loose. And they are a beautiful fit. Click, click, click. And it did all fit together, yeah. So, maybe not holding right. So, you know, it's not warped. It's holding together. A bit of pressure there in the middle, and it's fine. It's basically fitting together. So, um, pretty good for its age and the moulding. We'll have a detailed look at that as we go through the kit. I'd already, in my dry fit, I'd already sort of put wings together. They were on the sprue. I did cut them off. So, um, you will see a lot of rivets. They kind of went to Rivet City here. Can you see them? Rivet City, but um, the thinking always was back then that you would be hand painting either Humbrol enamels or maybe even some acrylic paints and overdoing the details. I mean, at least your panel lines are not huge troughs, as a lot of people complain about FX kits later on. 
that's not really there. I made mean, sure the, the error on here has got quite a gap, but then again, that's what they're like. That's exactly how it is. Right? That will actually paint up nicely, and I've seen them painted, they look absolutely gorgeous. So there's another one. Right? <laughs> and that, again, that part just did not require any fiddling. There was no flash on it. It was just basically, I haven't even taken all the nubs off. It's just clicking together. Pretty well spot on. There won't be much work to get that looking perfect. So that's good. So there's quite a box of mixed parts of propellers and pilots and things that just decided they didn't want to be on the sprue anymore. That happens with your airfix kits. You basically learn to live with that. The um, clear parts are there and they're not bad, but if I can find it. My kit came with VacForm. All right? If you don't know what VacForm is, they're basically like the stuff that you know shirt box lids are made of and it's very thin and very clear okay so as opposed to a plastic part which will have quite a bit of thickness and often distort a vac form part is very thin see have a look through there you can see everything so it is well worth me putting a detailed interior into this because you will see it so that is a good thing so that was a win that part came i don't think it costs much i think it's only like a one shekel item anyway so you know it's something that you get your hands on should be available. I found just about all the optional extras were available online. So, uh, yeah, you can see how thick. I'll get it out because I'm not going to use the part. Well, normally I wouldn't touch my clear parts, but we're not going to use it, are we, Harry? No. no. So, you know, that's the um, the airfix part. And that's not too bad. You'll see you're getting distortion and it's super, look, it's very thick. So it's about 10 times probably thicker than the back form part. So we've got that there. We still will use the windows that go into the um, the cabin. Because remember, it's basically a boat that flies. Yeah, got to think of it that way. It's a boat that flies. It's not a flying boat. It was more boat-like than an aeroplane a lot of ways. And uh, you know that all the maintenance was done while it was floating on the water. Just about everything was done. To get on the land was actually quite a kerfuffle. Because to get them on the land, they had to actually plug wheels into the thing and then kind of drive it up a ramp. It, it naturally doesn't have any wheels. There's none. You know, like you get something like the... Um, the Catalina, well, there are wheels there, you can see, you know, the walrus, the wheels there that drop down. With this, there's no wheels, it's a boat, and it's got wings. <laughs> so it is, get on the land, you have to glue some wheels on it. That's what they have to do. Now what I've done with the um, sprues, that one was a propeller one, where the propeller suicidal, and that was the propeller that disintegrated, that wasn't in the kit. At some point it had not only suicided, it had escaped and gone to another dimension. It had, uh, yes. So we'll have a look at these parts in a sec as we go through instructions, but it's the usual kind of stuff from that period. The um, sprues are just open trees, so that, that's why they get damaged on the side and parts get knocked off, as opposed to now at least Airfix has you know, a rectangle sort of shape with the sprue lines all inside and your parts are inside that. It's protected from bumps. They didn't used to do that. They used to do this sort of crazy thing, which is all well and good, but I mean, you can even see in there, there's still more loose parts that were too big to fit in my little container. If you're enjoying my video, please hit the like button. Yeah, it really helps the algorithm and gets my videos seen. And comment, yep, just say something respectful. It all helps. And subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification so you can see my videos. And if you really want to help me out, bang, hit the super thanks. Yeah, super thanks is super easy and it super helps me out. All right, okay, let's get on with the video. Look at page one of the instructions then. Well, whatever page it is. First page has got some things. Now I said the hull halves, or um, well, the fuselage halves, if you like. You know, I keep calling it because it's really a boat. It's really a boat. As I said, the the fit on that is pretty darn good. And um, when you can when you can get them to line up, Harry. Yeah. But um, I really was impressed with that when I did the dry fit. So it should look fabulous. There's the dry fit. So yeah. Again, you've got rivets everywhere. It is Rivet City. Some people complain about that. I don't have a problem with it. I think that that's just going to give it a nice sort of detail and it's going to look great. I mean, I've seen guys go berserk and spend hours rolling those little rivet wheels on things to make them look good. Airfix did it for you back in 1959. Yeah, there you go. Don't bag Airfix. So yeah, you start off basically working with those hull halves. Got to call them halves. And you'll be popping in your little windows. And notice how there's really no flash. Nowhere I can see any flash, which is very good. I mean, sure, 50, 60, 70 kits often didn't have flash. They were good. 
I mean, I've, I've had those kits and I've been amazed every time how clean they are. You know, when I did the review on the, the e-boat from 1975, how clean and crisp the parts were. That's the thing. It's only the re-releases in the modern era that um, all the Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z and, and Gen bloody Millennium, they're all going, ah, oh, it's crap, FX is terrible. Well, it's not. FX used to be brilliant and it still could be. It still could be. Now, we move on from there and we start um, popping in pilots and seats and um, we start setting up gun turrets. Okay, now let's have a, have a look here. First off, pilots. Now, yep, yeah, this, um, this is 1950s, 1960s figures they're they're what they are and you'll get away with them and they they've got a little bit of you know edging there you've got to trim off but look in the cockpit paint it up with a yoke in front of them and all the rest of it they'll be fine they will do the job i wouldn't bother getting any aftermarket we can just clean those up clean a little bit of the you know the seam lines off and that sort of thing that's that's all you're going to need the one that's horrible and there's not much we can do about it are the um, the gunners, right? Um, you can probably use it, but this is the silly thing. They've got this ring there, right? And that ring is then going to join to the guns. Now, the guns are great big clod hopping affairs, and this is where aftermarket is your friend because cleaning those up, they're not too bad, but the seam lines and it's fiddly and it's you know, pretty ordinary. I have got the three hundred threes. For the quad turret, I have got the um, 0.5 Brownings for the forward guns and the side guns. Now, they did do different configurations, so don't scream at me going, they were all 303s. Yes, the Series 3 Sunderland or the Mark 3 Sunderland did have all 303s, but then they did upgrade at a certain point, and especially with the Australian ones, they had the 0.5 Browning. So I have done my research. Try and rivet out me there. So we will be putting metal barrels in for there, and I'll tell you all about that later so that'll improve that then your um your actual little um encasements for them well they're okay they're pretty simple they're what they are the interesting part with this one is when it fits in it's designed to um slide out of the way which is exactly what happened on the real aircraft right? the real aircraft it slides out right and then when you're doing maintenance and everything, it goes back to the platform there so they can actually run a mooring line, drop a buoy in, all those sort of things. It's a boat. I keep telling you, it's a boat. So there's that. I mean, the parts aren't bad. They're pretty plain, but they should clean up and paint up and they should be quite nice. A little bit of, little bit of burring there on the inside, but it's not a flash fest. You don't have to complain about it. The um, clear parts here, well, we won't be using those, right? That's what would go over that. That little thing will have a clear part on and then you've got your little guy inside and there'll be the barrels poking out. Well, I'm going to have nice shiny brass barrels, although they get painted. I'm going to do something with that figure just to make him a little more lifelike. He's not going to have a great big ring of confidence. No, we're not doing that. He'll um, it'll have something that makes him look like a real person. Even enough to pinch a figure out of another kit. I've got some stuff that's floating around. But that will look good. Now, we won't be using those because we have the vac form parts, right? As I said before, vac form parts replace all the clear parts except for the portholes so i've got that represented in one of these you've actually just got to cut your own slots which is good because there are versions you can have versions where they had two guns there it could have been two 303s or whatever there are versions where there's only one slot and they only had one of the browning 0.5 so you can actually decide what configuration you want because these clear little acetate parts allow you to put your slot where you want. Of course, you don't want to bugger up cutting the slot. Yeah, you always got to get your fingers in the slot and do it right. Yeah, that'll get you banned, Harry. That'll get you banned. Okay, um, so that's kind of what's happening there. Moving on, whoops, losing little guys. Moving on now, same sort of thing. We finish off some guns there. Then all those those um, pieces you made, those sub-assemblies, they're going to go in. And the sort of... You get to a point where you really want to think about painting. There's going to have to be a lot of chicken and egg stuff here where I work out what needs to be painted first, what needs to get painted later. As you can see, when you do this nose one, it rotates and the barrel tilts up and down, if you use this little ring of confidence, and it slides back. Very clever engineering for the time. Then we're doing those wings. Well, I've already shown you those, okay, and you'll be putting in some of these parts that um, suicided. So there's a, uh, it's an arrow on, it's an arrow on, yeah. And it actually is ribbed. There's not rivets on it, it's ribbed. 
probably a little overscale, but you'll get away with it, it'll be fine. And then you're building up some tailplane surfaces again, very similar looking parts. All those are over here, and again, they are you know, the panel lines are raised if you like, it's ribbed. But really, uh, they sort of did this because it would catch a wash nicely, and it was a good way to do it. And sometimes, I know some people have you know, filed them off some models and things, and then they've checked the research pictures, you know, they've done their research, and um, they actually were proud. Uh, you know, these were actually were rib lines. So we need to check on that, especially for things that were designed in the 1930s. Rib lines often popped out. We need to check on that. Not that I'm worried, because I'm not going to sand those off and scribe. Nah, couldn't be bothered. I haven't got the time. I don't want to live long enough to do all that. Um, so, yeah, that all goes together, and she starts to really come together. Now, if you want to put it on wheels, I don't, you do get that whole wheel mechanism. And as you can see, it's a great big sort of strutty thing, and it clicks into a little spot here. But you, when it's flying and when it's in the water, you don't see it. So I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. Okay. Now, there are a whole lot of bombs, and you get bomb racks. And um, these are bomb racks, and these slide out. It's rather a clever little thing again by FX. There's um, a whole slidey thing here, and there's a little panel here with more portholes, and the bomb racks slide out. So you can have them in the in position docked, or you can have them out, ready to go, and then you have a whole stack of bombs on there. That's um, oh, here. Yep, there we go. They're all in two parts. And look, there is no flash. There's just a little bit of a, a mould sort of a little nipple there. you just got to squeeze its nipple, guys. Yeah, we'll enjoy that. And, and that's all you got to do. So they'll go together nicely. So good there. No problems there. Okay, let's um, jump forward because really you'll get through this fairly quickly. There's only 150 parts. The um, nacelles, right? They're what they are. The motor is in there. You don't get separate motors. So there it goes. This motor was pretty consistent all the way through until later versions when they moved towards the Mark V. So, you know, that's it. And the props will fit straight in there with a little... Um, now, what I've done here is, because I'm missing a prop, and these props are a little bit over scale, I have found, for only half a shekel, complete replacement props, shafts, everything. So I have purchased those. They're not here yet. I'll show you those when we do the build. So that will improve that just a little bit. They get um, little exhaust thingies and all that. They're on here. And so they're going to require a little bit of cleaning up. But they're not too bad. They're not too bad at all. So that's good. All right. This stage, we'll be putting on those sub-assemblies. Get on the cells on with their little things, right? And then there's also a few little um, things like, you know, the... The, um, the radio, and, and, and that's the pizza makers. I, I don't know what these things are, right? That could be one of the Sonar devices, could be. Don't know. Let me know. Okay. Now you've got, if you're doing a wheelies thing, right, if you put those wheels in the front, you need a trolley at the back, okay? You need to take it down to the supermarket and get a trolley. That's it, all right? So well before Warriors had their trolleys, this is what the Sunderland was doing. It was a trolley thing, a trolley belly. And then they give you a basic sort of painting guide with their decals, which we don't have. So we throw that away. That's pointless because we're getting Aussie decals. That's right. There will be Aussie decals. So that's lovely. We're getting the Edward Color Photo Etch Interior. All right? There's a pick. And the beauty with that is there's not a lot of folding and mucking around. They're big pieces. They'll just go straight into this interior. Right? Be very easy. There will be no, you know, eye straining stuff like I did on my that bloody submarine I did where the parts were so tiny and fiddly. So the whole interior will basically transform with that photo etch. It's already painted. Don't have to do a thing, you know, whack my pilots in, give them a nice lunch, they're done. Easy as that. And of course you will, you know, there's, there's quite a view, there's quite a big view in there, so it's worth doing the interior. So there you go. So yeah, what have I got aftermarket? Aftermarket props, I've got aftermarket barrels, I've got uh, aftermarket decals, and I've got that interior coming, all right? And none of that stuff was terribly expensive, it's all available, We're just going to hunt around and find it, and you know, that's that's it. The, um, the only place I found flash, and I did find, yeah, here we go. This only flash in the whole kit that I found was there. And that's not even on a part. That's just flash on a tree, right? So, yep, no flash on this kit. So there you go. That is the short Sunderland. Version 3, of course. Yep, the most famous one. One that was most prolific. Okay. And my additions to it. Should give it that Australian flavour and new guns and a nice snappy interior and, you know, 
Aussie decals, yes, it should be quite good. Mine will be unique. It'll still be a Sunderland, yeah. Still be a Slumberland, <laughs> but it'll be a Harry one. And um, it won't be too much effort to do that because all the additions are the adding are simple. They're easy. I won't sort of get bogged down as I've done sometimes the bill's got too ambitious. No, none of that. Anyhow, look, um, big shout out to the patrons because really the patrons and the YouTube members, they're the guys that make these videos possible, okay? Without their patronage and support, well, I just wouldn't be here. If you want to help me out though with like a one-time donation, you can go to buy me a curry, okay? Buy me a curry, you just buy me a couple of curries and that throws some shekels my way and that all helps too. Anything you can to help me out means that I stay on air longer and I make you more videos. Everybody wins. Bass the Cat, of course, gets fed, which is very important. <laughs> very important. So there you go. That is my video review on this kit. And remember, we will not be building this for a couple of months yet. It's on the schedule. Go watch the poll video. <laughs> it's a couple of months. We will be building this. But I thought I'd give you a little tease up and show you what's uh, in the box and where we're going. So I hope you enjoyed that. All right. That's it for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini. Mm -hmm.